talk about a study that's going on thanks to the Bowling Green State University faculty and staff down there looking at the impact of airports here in the area. We'll tell you why they're involved in it and what they have found so far. But first and foremost, I want to start with my guest here in our first segment today, Toledo Mayor Mike Bell joining us here on the round table. No stranger to the table. Thanks. Thanks so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. No problem, Jeff. Let's let's talk a little bit about walking away from a few weeks of the, the, the rigors of the election and, and having a chance to sit back. When you won, you went on a little respite, you took your bike, mm -hmm. you went out west. Did you do anything like that just to get away for a little bit this time? No, what I wanted to be able to do is have a, a nice continuation of government. Um, I'll have more than enough time after uh, January to, to do whatever I need to be able to do, but what I want to do is make sure that the new administration has a smooth transition and we were able to pass on any, infor any information we need to be able to pass on. Were you shocked that you lost? I was, uh, yeah, I was disappointed, but you know, I mean, that's the, the thing about uh, the U.S. government. You always have a pretty smooth transition in government and I respect the democratic process and so, you know, I, when you're running, you know you can always lose and so it, it is just the nature of the beast. And, you have to be able to move on. You got to have a plan one and a plan two. As an independent candidate, you and Mike Collins both went to voters uh, supporting an independent stance. Mm -hmm. do, do you feel that you stayed true to being an independent all throughout your time in office, even through the debate season? And do you feel Collins did the same? I think that I stayed true to who I said I, that I was, and, and that is an independent. And now I think that in this government system that we have now, that really actually takes a balance of both sides to be able to really actually be able to govern. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that I did as close as I could to being an independent. Uh, nobody's totally independent from everything, but I, I think I was pretty close. And obviously a lot of my decisions were pretty focused and not worried about impacts. And so I, I think I stayed pretty true to that. And um, you'd have to ask Mike Collins if he stayed true to what he believes an independent is and you know I, I don't have any I'm not going to bring up anything negative on Mike Collins it's it's about you know I you'd have to ask him yeah. you know, how he feels about that portion and I understand that going yeah. into this today I figured it was a moot point uh, what, yeah. what what going into the next administration looks like for you personally you've been a captain you've been a chief <laughs> you've been a fire marshal and and you've been mayor what what of those titles uh, stands out to you? Which are you most proudest of? Which do you have, uh, I guess, uh, thoughts about wanting more of? Well, let me just say that each one of those is age-oriented. And what I'm saying by that is uh, there's no way I could be a UT football captain now, okay? Uh, my body wouldn't take it. I go out there and I stand along the sidelines with some of those guys. And they're huge and they're fast and uh, they just make me, crunch me like an ant. So mm -hmm. uh, it was good at the time. And so each one of the uh, being a fire chief and being a firefighter, that was good at that particular age in my life and, and period in my life. And uh, being a state fire marshal was good at that particular period. And being a mayor was good. So I've enjoyed the ride of, of my total life and being able to do these different things and being allowed to do things that other people have not been allowed to do. So each one of them was a great experience. I don't think any of them were any more greater than the other. Yeah. Uh, but it was just at that period of time in my life, that's where I was at. And I enjoyed it all the way to the to the end of each one of those. As you look back at your time as mayor, I mean, are you are you pleased? And I know you said it at the at the uh, during election night coverage. You said, "I am happy. I have no regrets about what I was able to do in these four years." You truly believe that? Absolutely, I have no regrets. Uh, I'm not looking back. There's nothing I'd change. Uh, I feel good about our movement. Uh, my mission when I came in was to balance that budget. We were able to balance it. Uh, to be able to leave it to uh, a new administration, balanced and a little bit different than when I came in, mm -hmm. and seeing a lot of the stuff that we've been able to do, been from hiring police officers to fixing roads to being able to tear down houses, I'm I'm pretty comfortable. I mean, I, I did my job. I did exactly what I said I was going to do. And if somebody was to go back and look uh, four years ago, I did exactly what I said I was going to do, and and I'm totally. Uh, comfortable with where I'm at. You told me in our talks before you went head to head with Keith Wolkowski four years ago, you said, I am the non-politician in this race. Do you feel you became a politician over the last four years or do you still feel no. you've, you've got that I'm not a politician mindset? Because, if, if because I, people would disagree with you. Well, I mean, you, you, have to, you have to understand politics, but that doesn't necessarily make you a politician. If I was a politician, there probably would have been other things that I did that I wouldn't have done, okay? 
And so I, I still stick to that. I'm not a politician. You know, I could care less about being a politician. I do care about getting things done mm -hmm. and about making sure that the city is doing and moving in the direction that it needs to be able to move into. And sometimes you've got to understand the politics to be able to move that. But that doesn't make you necessarily a politician. And so I, I don't think it, you can be totally uneducated that you're working inside a political system. But that doesn't change that for me, a lot of decisions, if it had just been political, I probably wouldn't have made them because then that's a better protection mode. But because I'm not worried about the politics, I knew that this was the appropriate way to move, the appropriate direction to move to be able to move our city where it needed to be. And so uh, it wasn't political to me. It was just the right thing to do at the right time. Social media allows us the, the quickness, if you will, to reach out to some of our viewers. And mm -hmm. we asked them if you had one question to ask Mike Bell on Facebook. Uh, and time and time again, uh, as you're <laughs> outgoing office, China came up. Yeah. Um, and, and what happened there, what is happening there as you leave office, mm -hmm. and, and then to touch on the Marina District, and, and if you're happy with where that all is. I'm absolutely happy. What people expect, and I guess maybe it's because of technology, and that something that you start is going to turn around in just, you know, in two days or three days or a month or a year. What I was trying to do is set the foundation for the future for younger people, you know, that. 10 or 15 or 20 years from now, that we've started the relationships necessary to be able to create the appropriate business environment inside the city of Toledo. So I'm very happy that we found people who were prepared to invest. Obviously, this investment is being monitored by other places inside the United States. Just as recently as two weeks ago, we had a Chinese business investor bidding, outbidding Gilbert from, from Cleveland mm -hmm. on buildings in downtown Detroit and their marina. And I think that now we have actually brought attention to this particular area that was not given before. We've had people that came in from Texas to look at Toledo that had not ever thought about investing here or doing anything. So my bottom line was getting the word out that Toledo was open for business and reaching out anywhere I could globally to make sure that that occurred. And I feel totally comfortable with that. And I understand that there are people who are much more conservative and would prefer us to just stay in house. Well, if that was the case and we could do that, we would have done that way before I became mayor. We had to be able to look outside uh, the box to be able to move this city forward. I think that we appropriately did that. And I believe that if, if you leave the investors alone, they will do what is appropriate to be able to move their business. But nobody, no, no investors right now, are moving on businesses if they're not sure what the economy is going to be. And mm -hmm. so that's the bottom line. And you can threaten them. You can do whatever you want to do but theirs is about being able to make profit and, in their business. And they have a window, and we've talked Absolutely. about this. They have a window in mm -hmm. order to make something move on that right. property. Absolutely. There's been infrastructure put in there, but why or but why not? that was put in there before they ever Okay, in front but, of but why or why not will it shock you if there's nothing moving on that property in another two years? Why wouldn't it shock me? Because I'm looking at the whole United States, and you show me where there's a lot of mass movement at this particular time with the economy being the way it is. Most These are not stupid people. They didn't become uh, rich being stupid, and, and no nobody out there that is investing in these properties uh, gets the economic growth for themselves mm -hmm. without understanding what the economy is. And so they're doing what is appropriate based on the economy, and when they're ready to move, They'll move. That's no different than Northtown. That's no different than Southwick Mall. That's no different than other properties that we have in our joint economic development zones. The, the deal is that Toledo buys this property back. If you got the money. Well, that's just it. <laughs> I mean, this. I, I guess. I guess my point is this: Is this your legacy? No, my legacy. The Marina District is not going to be forever uh, uh, linked to Mike Bell's uh, name. Well. I mean, it depends on who you're talking to. For me, the bottom line is that we took a piece of property that was just blowing in the wind with trash blowing, uh, sold it for $3.8 million to somebody who has a potential of doing something, and now it's actually making about $100,000 in tax money that comes into our county every year. So I took something that had no And value. is that getting paid? Yeah. Okay, it, the money is not the issue. You haven't heard any complaints on that. So the issue is that I took something that, that Basically, we weren't making any money on. Mm -hmm. Turn it into something we're now making some money on, and people are still upset. So what I learn in politics, and this is the part, you, you can't please everybody. I'm totally comfortable with that investment plan. I think that they're going to do something. Remember, they own also the docks, mm -hmm. and they're taking care of business there. So it's not like uh, we 
are not making money on this and that we're not doing something in a positive. Can it do more? Yes. But I don't think anybody in this economy wants to build a building yeah. and not have people inside of it because that would be the next mark. Okay, well you built the building, but there's nobody inside of it, okay. Another thing that came up on Facebook was safety. Uh, mm -hmm. Safety services, I know we're adding police officers, mm -hmm. that was big for you, um, also firefighters, but uh, in your time in the last four years, there, ha there has been this mindset that gangs are worse. Um, what do you think is the outlook as you leave office on safety? Well, the, the outlook is that we've actually reduced crime. Remember when I came in, we hadn't hired any police officers in probably, we were hired 30 police officers in about a six year period, and in a three year period before I arrived, we had hired zero police officers. So. When you look at that and you look at where, okay, that meant that the numbers were reducing, we weren't adding any officers, mm -hmm. and it didn't start to occur until I got in office, it takes a while to catch up. So hiring those 190 police officers in less than a four-year period is a whole lot of people. Was that because okay. the economy was improving? Uh, it's improving, the plus we were able that? to balance the budget yeah. and some of the things that we did internally to fix this thing so that we could move forward with being able to hire police officers and firefighters. So now, which allows, and if you see, now that we're starting to get our numbers up in our police department, the crime rate is actually starting to drop. In the first couple of years, it wouldn't have because we didn't have the officers on, on site to be able to do that because mm -hmm. none had been hired before I became mayor. So it took a while to start stabilizing. Uh, if the new administration is willing to continue the hiring practice, you'll see crime farther drop. But we had to first fix the budget to be able to hire the individuals to be able to to do this. Wednesday night, uh, Police Chief Derek Diggs was talking with a District 5 neighborhood meeting and at that time he said he loves being police chief, wants to remain police chief. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would be a mistake for Mike Collins to put somebody else in that position? I think, let me just say this because I'm not going to try to leverage uh, the new administration. I will say that I think that Police Chief Diggs is one of the best police chiefs in the United States. I think that he's doing exactly what's supposed to be done, enough to where his peers are actually monitoring his process and how, how he's doing things to be able to take it back to their cities. He's very well educated, uh, he's very knowledgeable in what he does, and I, th I think he's a good choice. And I think that if uh, somehow he leaves the city of Toledo, uh, he will have not any issues in finding another job somewhere else and probably in a bigger venue than probably Toledo. But he is a very, very good police chief He's done what he's supposed to do. He's bringing in modern technology. He's using the cameras. He's bringing in the dogs. He's bringing in the mm -hmm. motorcycles. He's doing all the modern stuff that is necessary to reduce crime. He's increased his gang task force. He's working on the, the domestic uh, violence issues. He's 360, so I, I think he's good, but once again, I'm not trying to leverage a new administration. Uh, the, the mayor has to feel comfortable with his selectee uh, in that particular position, uh, but I think that Chief Diggs is an unbelievable police chief. If, give me, I want to give you a hypothetical last question. If Sylvania, if Rossford, if Perrysburg, if the outlying communities would have had a vote in this Toledo mayoral race, do you think you would have won? Because your goal was to become a regional mayor. Do you think you accomplished <laughs> that? All I can tell you is that if you went out to Sylvania, my sign was sitting on the Welcome to Sylvania, one of my uh, Vote for Bell signs, and I thought that was sort of funny, but you know, it, I've had a lot of people from the suburban area that, that understood that we were trying to tie all of our destinies together so that we could have a, uh, a larger movement of people in a, in a positive direction. So I think so. And, but and was that important to, it was, to, to reach out regionally? It, you will find absolutely for any uh, cities in the future, being able to work together is an extremely important thing because with the economy being the way it is, the more you can do things together, you reduce the cost to the taxpayers, but you still get the added bang of yeah. having a large force of people moving in the same direction. Are you done with politics? We'll see. We'll what's, see. What does that mean? Well, that means just exactly what I said, we'll see. Do you have something lined up for January? No, yeah, well I take that back. I, you know, that motorcycle is looking for something to do and I've got uh, a couple places I've really wanted to go that I haven't had the opportunity. Um, and so I have a lot of freedom. Um, I'm actually, after January 2nd, I'm pretty liberated uh, from the standpoint of not having to worry about every place I move, there's a camera or a reporter mm -hmm. or that I gotta answer or be accountable to anybody. So I'm, I'm, I'm good. And uh, I, I wish we would have been able to do a better, uh, but I'm very, very proud of my administration. I'm very proud of what we were able to accomplish in a, in a very uh, uncomfortable time in American, history uh, from the standpoint of our economy. So I'm, 
I'm very pleased with where we, where we ended up. Mayor Bell, thank you so much. No Appreciate problem. it. Good luck to you. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this.